Hello guys and welcome back. Now, I'm sure that most of you who are interested in chemistry, and particularly in energetic chemistry, know the chemical going by the name of isopropyl nitrite. You know that chemical that burns with a white flame, has some questionable recreational uses as well as some crazy uses in chemistry and so on. You can say it is an overall very cool compound. Well, today's video will be all about it, and though it may be a bit less dramatic as we will be only synthesizing some of it, the things that we will be using it in the future for are going to be on a whole new level of that. So without further ado, let's actually see what even is this compound. Isopropyl nitrite is a member of compounds that are named esters. This means that they have this ester group here. You can think of them as a mix of an acid and an alcohol. And when they react in a reaction known as esterification, they form a compound composed of both of them. Esters are everywhere, and some more known include ethyl acetate, which finds use as a great solvent, as well as many other esters such as pentyl acetate, ethyl formate, methyl butanoate, and more. Most of these esters have a pretty unique and amazing property to smell really nice. Most of them smell like fruit or flowers, and they are so nice to smell. But isopropyl nitrite is different, as it doesn't really have a smell. That is because it is an ester of an inorganic acid rather than a carboxylic acid. But it does have its own specialties. One that is the most infamous is its use as a recreational drug, known as poppers. I won't go to much detail about that. It also has a unique property to rapidly drop blood pressure after exposure, and getting a big whiff of it isn't really a good experience. But okay enough theory for now, and let's make some isopropyl nitrite. So to make isopropyl nitrite, we just need a couple of reagents. I will start out by measuring out 13 grams of sodium nitrite. This slightly yellow powder is really useful in the lab and I had used it many times before on this channel. One thing to keep in mind though is it's pretty high toxicity if ingested. Next, I dissolved it into 30 milliliters of water. The dissolution is pretty endothermic so the solution cools down rapidly. So now this is the aqueous solution, and now we need to prepare another one containing the isopropyl alcohol. To do that, I got a beaker and I added in 15 milliliters of isopropanol. Then this was followed by roughly 20 mils of some concentrated hydrochloric acid. As you can see, a lot of acid vapors were released and you don't want to breathe that in. Anyway, now we can set up the vessel for the reaction. The easiest method is just a separatory funnel, and you'll see why in just a minute. So I clamped down the funnel and poured in all of the nitrite solution. Next, once that was done, I can start adding the alcohol slash acid mixture dropwise to the nitrite solution. The reaction is immediate, and we can observe that a thin, oily layer starts to form at the top of the liquid, and that is our product. Now, I only need to continue adding the mixture to the nitrite until everything is added. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that the additions must be done slowly to prevent heat to build up, and also because the reason I will explain now. You see, what is going on in this reaction is as follows. Firstly, when we add the alcohol-slash-acid mixture, the hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium nitrite, forming nitrous acid. And this is the acid that forms an ester with isopropanol. But nitrous acid is actually quite unstable, and if too much of it is generated at once, it starts to decompose to nitrogen oxides. And we don't want that. Some decomposition is unavoidable, and you can actually see some brown nitrogen dioxide gas in the funnel. Okay, so back to the reaction. The newly formed ester is insoluble in water, 
and thus, as it is also lighter than water, it separates as a layer above the water phase, and at the end of the reaction it can be easily separated. That is when the separatory funnel comes in handy. Okay, so now I added all of the alcoholic mixture into the funnel, and now I need to wait roughly 10 minutes to ensure complete reaction and to maximize the yield. I also shook the funnel in an effort to really mix the two layers and to let them react as much as possible. Once that is done, I can just go ahead and drain the lower aqueous phase, which can be discarded. The upper organic phase is collected, and that is pretty much it. I stored it in a vial, and ideally I would include some calcium chloride to remove any excess water and thus prevent hydrolysis over long time storage. But I will use this stuff soon anyway, and I also need to make more of it. Also, if you want to be extra safe, you can also include some sodium carbonate to scavenge some leftover acids that can speed up the unwanted hydrolysis. But anyway, that's it for the synthesis. And now we can move to the fun part, where we'll burn some of it. It has a unique property that it burns with a gray to white flame, which sounds really cool, and it is rather common for nitrogen-containing organic compounds to have that flame color. Anyway, to test that, I just got some of it onto a strip of aluminum foil and lit it up. It is really volatile, so it catches flame easily, but it quickly turns out that it doesn't burn that way at all. Well, maybe there are some hints of whitish flame, but it looks like any ordinary flame. I suspect that is because of two main reasons. Firstly, this nitrite is still crude, so it is possible that it still contains some sodium ions that color the flame yellow. And secondly, there is just too much burning at once. So to remedy this, I took a small beaker and shot in a small amount of the nitrite and gave it one more try. This time it works much better and it actually produces a nice gray flame. At first, there are still some yellow flames, but gradually they become more and more gray. It is so mesmerizing to watch, as you don't see a gray flame every day. So, that is pretty much all for this short and simple video, but as I said, there is so much to come on this channel in the next few months. So stay tuned, and don't miss out on new videos because we have so much planned. But for now, enjoy these magical flames, and as always, bye.